So I'm building my first mechanical keyboard and I'll be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. So bear with me if I get anything wrong. So this is my first mechanical keyboard that I'm building myself. I've used mechanical keyboards before. I just haven't built one before. This is the Keychron Q1. I also have their, one of their key sets, um, black and well, white and gray with some red. Um, and this is the Mac layout as far as I can tell because it has the Mac keys on it. I also have some switches from them. Um, I'm not actually sure which switches these are, so um, we're just gonna have to get in there and see. So I just wanted to quickly look at pricing again. So this is the Q1 with the knob, so it's the knob version, and this is the ISO version. It starts at $159 on their website. So it is, I don't wanna say it's budget budget, but it's definitely cheaper compared to some of the other um, sort of custom keyboard, out, custom keyboard sort of manufacturers out there. Um, for like Keychron, especially over the last few years, have really blown up, haven't they, with their with their keyboards? I think I covered well. I've covered quite a few of their keyboards on the channel um, over the years. Uh, I remember I got the Q2, I think, or K2, which was my first mechanical keyboard I got from them. And yeah, it was great. Right, so we're in the box, nicely packaged. Uh, user manual here. We don't need that. I say that even though I have not built a keyboard before. We get a braided USB-C USB -C cable with a dongle as well. So if you don't have a USB-C port, that's nice to have. Nice to see that's included. Quite high quality feeling cable as well. I mean, I don't think it's gonna be as good as sort of those cord cables that you see, but honestly, I still think this is a very good quality cable. Move that aside. And let's get the keyboard out. Oh, that is heavy. That's a heavy boy. Um, that feels like it's made out of metal. I can only assume it is. Um, actually, we need to see what else is in the box. Looks like we have some screws and some other stuff in here. I'm not actually exactly sure what's in here. And then we have the quick start guide as well. Oh, and then we have the tools. That's really nice, actually. That's a, that's a nice touch. So screwdriver. Allen key, uh, key remover, or another, I guess two key removers. Uh, yeah, that's actually really nice. Instructions here on setting it up, um, switching between Mac and Windows. So let's get into the keyboard itself. Um, it's, it's heavy. This is not a light keyboard at all. I wouldn't say that this is travel friendly, just from the weight alone. Oh, that is beautiful. Wow. Made from metal, aluminium or something. Oh, and look at those, look at those little gold elements there, the gold screws. Oh, this is, this is very nice. Wow. Um, I am impressed. I am definitely impressed. This is, this is really, really nice. Okay, uh, let's get into putting some switches in, shall we? Here we go, we have some brown switches. Yeah, they seem quite quiet actually as well. Um, let's get this out of here, shall we? And let's put these in, I guess. There we go. So, yeah, I'm going to be here for a while because I've got to put all these in, don't I? So, um, I'll fast forward this bit. Not going to lie, this is pretty therapeutic and it's raining outside as well, so I can hear the rain. I don't know if you guys can hear the rain, but I can hear the rain outside and it's quiet in here in the office and here I am just putting together a keyboard. <laughs> Pretty therapeutic, that's for sure. Hmm. Before I finish the rest of the keyboard I just want to quickly talk about this knob. So it is a clicky knob and it is a rotary knob and it feels incredible. The sort of clicking between each rotation is so satisfying. Oh. It just feels like a really high quality product overall. Okay, so we have all of the switches in. Now it's time to get into the keycap or the keycaps. Let's have a look at what we have in here. Oh, they do look very pretty. Very pretty indeed. Wow, okay. So these are clearly meant to look like a classic Apple keyboard. Okay, so we're finally there. And I've got to say, this is much better than I expected, especially with the keys. When I first saw the keys in the box, or the graphic on the box anyway, I was thinking to myself, mm, white keys, I'm not really sure. But with this case, 
it looks beautiful. It looks absolutely stunning. The case itself is made from aluminum. And like I said, it feels absolutely solid. It's so heavy and so tactile. It's just, yeah, you could you could hit someone with this and you could do some damage. I'll tell you that, <laughs> you could definitely hit. Why do I feel like I always wanna hit people with keyboards? Anyway, the aluminum itself though does have a bit of, I can't tell if it's under the lighting, but to me, it looks like it has a bit of a, a green tinge to it. Um, I don't know if it's just me. It could just be the lighting, but in this lighting right now that I have, the big soft box that I have here, it just looks a bit, it looks like there's a bit of a green tinge to it. The keycaps themselves are Dysub PBT keycaps, so they shouldn't fade. They shouldn't fade over time. They should look like they look now. And I really do like the look of this. I think it looks really nice. This sort of retro Apple keyboard vibe. I love how you have the hello keycap instead of the escape keycap out there. The knob as well, like I mentioned earlier, is really, really nice. The icons on them look really nice and the actual print on the keycaps looks super sharp and super clear. Um, yeah, fantastic set of keycaps. I'm very, very impressed. So I have it connected up to my MacBook now so that I can actually test it out. And once I connected it, um, I actually didn't realize, but it has RGB. <laughs> so yeah, I can just about see the RGB under the keys. I can't see them properly through the keyboard, mainly because the keycaps obviously aren't see-through. They don't have any sort of translucency to them. And there's no other way, for, again, yeah, there's no other way for me to see the RGB. Um, but it's nice to have. If, you're, if that's what you're into, then that's what you're into, right? For me personally, I'm not really too fussed about RGB, but I can see why other people like it. All the keys work as intended. I'm just looking at um, seeing if the Mac keys work with the Mac. Yeah, everything works as intended. Um, as you can probably tell, it is a, pr a pretty loud keyboard. It's not the quietest thing in the world. So yeah, the typing experience on it is really nice. It has a very linear motion to the keys. I love the volume dial, like I said. I think this is actually one of my favorite features of this keyboard. So here's my Mode 65, and it is considerably smaller than the Keychron keyboard, mainly because obviously it's a 65% layout rather than a 75% layout. Yeah, I think I still prefer my Mode 65, mainly because my Mode 65 was custom built. Um, the keys are a lot softer on it. Um, it's much quieter. Just feels a lot more of like a higher quality product as well. Um, but the difference between the two isn't as much as you'd think. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think the actual case itself is probably only just a little bit better on the Mode 65. I think it's just finished a bit better. Um, the case on this is a bit more rough. Um, I also don't think the edges are as nice, but it's still very high quality. I'm not saying that it's bad. It's like, it's like comparing two very high quality products and trying to figure out which one's more high quality than the other high quality product. Um, that's the best way I can explain it really. Um, yeah, like I said, I think I still prefer, yeah, I think I still prefer the keys on the Mode 65 compared to this. There's something more about sort of like a, a creaminess. Weird, I know, but there's more of a sort of creaminess <laughs> to the Mode 65 than there is to the Keychron. But the Keychron looks really good. Um, I really do like the look of this. The keycap layer, I think I prefer the keycap design on the Keychron compared to the keycap design on the Mode 65. But the great thing is I can just switch the keycaps over if I want to. So yeah, that's pretty much it, building my own custom keyboard. I mean, I wasn't really building it from scratch, was I? I wasn't lubing it up or sort of building the case or anything. This is sort of like a half DIY keyboard sort of thing. Um, but I really liked it. Being able to put the keys in and stuff, there's something about that feeling of building something yourself, right? Um, there's a more satisfying experience to it. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll leave links to everything obviously in the description below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.